Yo, this is Chuck, and welcome to the How to Defeat Dudes video blog. Now before I say anything else, first and foremost, please let me apologize for the fact that it's been a little while since I've made this kind of video. This past summer I had a whole lot of action work for E3 out in LA, as well as a whole lot of video game and really cool movie projects. Beyond that, as I'm sure you can tell by the background of this video, I'm also back in the States for a little while so that I can do a few fight action seminars. Now, the great thing about that is that I get to be outside in this beautiful Michigan summer so that you guys can listen to awesome nature sounds in the background like the, the trees rustling and birds singing and insects chirping and all these wonderful things. The bad side is that it's entirely likely that I'm going to need a blood transfusion from all the blood I'm going to lose from the mosquitoes. However, it's my hope that if nothing else, it will show you guys just how much I love you. Because I'm out here in the middle of summer with long sleeves on and a hat, doing it up anyway. It's for you guys, for all of y'all, I love you! Anyway, let us progress to the topic at hand. Now, what I would like to discuss for this vid is the simple question, can anyone do martial arts? I'd really like you guys to know that I'm not coming at you as somebody who's always been this kind of big, muscular, strapping kind of dude. Now, when I started martial arts, I was actually a skinny 15-year-old with really big, colorful glasses and braces who was too shy and too non-competitive to play any kind of team sport. Basically, I was a C-minus average student who spent all of his time sitting at home playing video games. So anyways guys, the point that I would really like to share, more so than anything else, is the fact that learning a martial art is a really different experience for everyone. But it is something that everyone can get something from. Everybody does martial arts for different reasons, and not all of them are in a fight. You know, doing martial arts doesn't mean you have to be mean or aggressive or really, really fight happy at all. You know, some people do martial arts because it's a physical activity that allows you to use and strengthen pretty much every corner of your body. So in that respect, there's a really good physical fitness aspect to it. You know, other people might do martial arts for the same intellectual reasons that some people enjoy hunting, because it's a connection to the past. You know, it's just kind of a cool way to connect with something that people have been doing for literally thousands of years, and to kind of connect with something and have an experience of something that, for the most part, we don't necessarily get in modern society anymore. And of course for myself, one of the reasons that I started martial arts and that I loved it so much was that going back to what I originally said at the beginning of the video, I was a really shy kid, or at least I wasn't really competitive, so I just didn't really have the personality for team sports. But Taekwondo, I could do completely by myself. And you know, if I wanted to go and compete with other people, then I could just go and do tournaments whenever I felt like it. But I didn't actually have to. If I wanted to just focus on just the training because I just liked the training, then I could just do the training by myself and it was great but of course in a safe and non-threatening context. That's one of the reasons that personally I think martial arts are cool. At the same time, however, there's a lot of people who actually aren't even into the fighting side of it at all. They just like the spirituality of it. Because as you're learning and you're progressing in martial arts, almost regardless of which system you're studying, you always end up learning and kind of observing things about yourself that go beyond your rational thinking. For example, even if you look at boxing, a lot of people would argue, oh, you know, there's no philosophy or there's no spirituality in boxing. But the fact of the matter is, for a long, long time, boxing has been referred to as the sweet science. And the reason that it was referred to as the sweet science is because even if there's no written philosophy, there is a movement philosophy. And philosophy, my friends, is philosophy. And then if you go even beyond that, there's a lot of martial arts that actually aren't very combative at all. For example, if you look at Tai Chi, pretty much every movement in Tai Chi has a combat application. But the combat applications aren't the emphasis in terms of kind of allowing you to feel out how your body is and what's weak and what's strong and kind of how your blood is flowing and all these kinds of things. And even for people who may not necessarily be perfectly physically able, there's still a lot of things you can learn simply from the philosophy of the training. You know, for myself, the number one thing that I got from martial arts wasn't actually learning how to fight at all. It was the goal setting. Because if you look at the whole belt ranking system that you see in a lot of martial arts, basically you have a long-term goal, which is your black belt, and you have all these little short-term goals that you have to achieve in order to reach your long-term goal. So then you think, okay, by the end of this month, I need to be able to learn this form so that I can go for my next rank. Then, you know, within six months, I'd like to be testing for this rank. Within, you know, a year, I'd like to be testing for this rank. So you learn to kind of break life up into all these little pieces that make everything more manageable along the way. Taking to heart this process of goal setting was more so than any other reason why it is that I could achieve most if not all of the things that I really, really wanted to do in my life. Now, you know, another reason that people will try martial arts and they end up sticking with it for a really, really long time is because if you get into a really good school, then there's really almost always a strong family environment. You know, you have these people that you've been training alongside and growing alongside and developing alongside for years and years and years and you develop these really kind of deep, awesome bonds with people. 
you know, because you're sweating alongside and you're working out and you're kind of overcoming your obstacles all together. And that's great. Just earlier today, I went by the Taekwondo school that I came from and I had a chance to sit and talk with my salam or my master instructor. You know, right now I'm 35 years old. I started Taekwondo training when I was 15. So basically I've been training under him for 20 years. He's like my second dad, you know, and I've learned all the kinds of things from him that kids learn from their dad, in addition to learning from my own dad. And then beyond that, at this point, I've known both of his sons for their entire lives, right? It's just like family, and that's the way that good martial arts schools always are. So this brings us to our second point. There are lots and lots of different kinds of martial arts. Last I checked, depending on how exactly you categorize them, there are somewhere between 80 and several hundred different martial arts. Some martial arts focus on internal development or understanding your key energy. Other ones focus on spiritual development. Some of them focus purely on external development, like building up your bones and your muscles and everything to be physically strong. Some are quite aggressive and offensive. Some are quite defensive. But the point of all of them is simply to teach you how to be stronger within the context of your own personality. Meaning that they teach you what exactly your particular weaknesses are and how to develop your strengths and how to use your strengths when you need them both in and out of conflict or fighting kinds of situations. So the point that I'm getting at is that regardless of what kind of build you have, there's always some kind of martial art that you can do and that fits your build or your body type really well. If you're short and stocky, then a grappling system like judo or something might work for you really, really well. For people who are quite thin and everything, taekwondo is awesome. If you're the kind of person who has a really strong upper body, but maybe you're not so flexible with your legs, then you'd probably be really good at boxing. And even for people who may not necessarily be perfectly physically able, there's still a lot of things you can learn simply from the philosophy of the training. You know, while living in Japan and doing capoeira there, I met one Japanese capoeira master who's actually quite large. He's a little bit on the obese side. And while his size did make it more difficult for him to move, he did get into the hoda. He played with everybody else. Everybody liked playing with him because he was a really cool guy. And they respected the fact that he was still there despite his difficulties. Beyond that, that also meant that he simply shifted his focus. So instead of being focused on the actual kind of movement part of the capoeira, he was focused more on the music. You know, he knew all of the songs, he could play all of the instruments, you know, he developed this great booming voice. And whenever there was a gathering or a hoda, he was always the one that everybody wanted to sing and, and to be on the beating bow and everything else because he could do it better than everybody else there because he focused on that. But if you look at Bill Superfoot Wallace, one of the greatest karate and kickboxing legends of all time, the whole reason that he got into karate was because he was doing judo before that and he actually destroyed his right knee. And he couldn't do judo anymore, but he thought, you know, what the heck, in doing karate, I can just use my, my right leg to stand on and I'll just kick with the left. So he just became a left-sided kicker. And he ended up becoming a world champion that way. You know, even when I speak to my YouTube subscribers, there's a few people who might be physically challenged and whatnot. But when I talk to them, they know this stuff as well as I do. And even if they don't have the same physical tools that I do to work with, at heart they understand the philosophy of how to take care of themselves and how to defend themselves. And that, more than anything else, is what matters. And that's what's going to save you in a bad situation. Fighting at its core, and I mean all fighting, even like football games or basketball games, is simply the process of quickly and efficiently searching out and then exploiting your opponent's weaknesses using your own strengths. Now, the third reason that I think pretty much anybody can study martial arts is because martial arts isn't always about being ring tough. There are different kinds of toughness. Going back to the discussion of one of my YouTube subscribers, you know, there's one guy in particular I've been talking with for a while who due to medical reasons had to have one of his heels removed. But even so, he's still training and he's still growing and learning as a person. And more than anything else, he's still developing as a fighter in here. And when I made the video not too long ago about how to fight on crutches, he was the one that offered me some of the best and most realistic advice on how to improve on some of those concepts. You know, beyond that, I have another friend who came from my Taekwondo school. And when she started Taekwondo, she was actually quite obese as well. And over the course of going from her white belt to her black belt, she lost 300 pounds. And in working through this process, she also became a ring fighter. And then she went on to become a national champion for her weight class. That's awesome. And for me, that's pretty doggone tough. So anyway, the point that I'm getting at is please don't think that martial arts or that martial artists are all a bunch of kind of chest-beating, testosterone-filled jocks, because most of us aren't. So now, those are all the reasons why I think anybody can study martial arts, and now I'd like to recap with all the reasons why I think everybody should. One, so you can learn effective strategies for goal setting. Two, so that you can learn about yourself, you can learn about your strengths and your weaknesses, and more than anything else, you can learn to be tough, but in your own way. And three, 
because there's an awesome physical fitness and family building side to it as well. So not only can you get in shape, but you can make awesome, great long-term friends along the way. So guys, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about the topic. As with most of my videos, this video is probably already too long anyway. So I'm going to stop here. <laughs> okay. But as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you guys again soon. Yosh!